2016 was a milestone year for South African motorsport. The introduction of the Sassol GTC Championship brought with it a new lease of life to the local racing landscape. 12 months on, the competition couldn't be stronger. What can Stephen do? He'll make it three wide. Extraordinary racing. He has a big go, but locks the rear brakes. He's out of control, and he's gone round. In the last year alone, we've crowned our inaugural champion. Up and coming racers have made a name for themselves, while the biggest names in the sport have shaken up the field. So join us as we celebrate one year on for the Sassol GTC Championship. It's hard to believe that just 12 months ago, the Sassol GDC Championship was unveiled right here at Swartkorps Raceway. And now we're back for round four of the 2017 Championship. Hi, I'm Litsa Khozulu, and GTC has grown massively since it began. But before we get into a new weekend of racing, let's look at the year that was. The introduction of the Sassol GTC Championship last year saw the beginning of an exciting new chapter for saloon car racing in South Africa. GTC, or Global Touring Cars, was designed from some of the most successful elements of series around the world to make a unique production-based category locally. Look, I think any championship, uh, you know, getting off the ground is difficult. But, you know, in GTC, we had a unique situation of, of getting the car designed, getting the cars built, supplied to the teams, and obviously putting the rest of the championship together. I think the progress that we've made in 12 months in all areas um, has been fantastic. Yes, there have been challenges, as there always be. But um, I'm really proud from, from, as I said, from the base we come from, we can look back with pride. You know, it's an emotional sport, everybody wants to win, um, but I think that the platform that we've created and what we're generating here uh, is offering everybody an equal opportunity. And at the end of the day, we, we, we generally have some happy people around here, so it's been, it's been good. While overall engine performance is continually being developed, in 2017 there have been numerous improvements made to the championship, including new soft tyre compounds and the introduction of the reverse grid races, which have become fan favourites. From the spectator fans' point of view, it's been great. You know, they've shown us great support, and um, you know, there were times when I thought that we could have delivered a little bit more for them. But Kyle Army this year for me was a massive turning point in terms of the actual on-track racing. We had a scintillating second heat there, so we have reverse grids now going forward, um, and they've really helped out with the field, the size that it is at the moment. It's so nice to see drivers getting out of the cars with their smiling, you know, happy faces. They're smiling. They've had a great race. They haven't maybe won, but they've had a fantastic race, and it's been it's been good. So as we approach the halfway mark of season number two. Where to next for GTC? Well, GTC going forward, it's all about getting new cars, new entries onto the grid. You know, the teams that we've got here are, you know, some of the best teams in the country. We've got, I think, the best drivers in the country, but there's a lot more of them out there. Some drivers that we know that should be here that are not here yet. Yeah, we're going to focus on also really capturing the privateer market out there. You know, there's, uh, we have a lot of the best teams in the, in the category at the moment, but the privateers are something that we're missing. So we have some new initiatives that we're going to be announcing in the next couple of weeks. Um, that are aiming to attract privateers and give them the same opportunity to race against some of the top guys that are in here at the moment. So we're looking forward to that um, and it's going to be very, very exciting for the fans, I can promise you that. So before we get into our first 17 lap race here at Svartkops, a quick look now at the weekend so far. Lots of new faces impressing with fast times, including RSC Racing's Michael Van Royen, who topped two out of three practice sessions yesterday. Robbie Walt qualified his best so far this year in third. Series champ Michael Stevens sits second on the timesheets, but it was Gennaro Bonafidi who took his third pole position of the season. In GTC2, Brad Liebenberg scored his second class pole for 2017, ahead of teammate Chris Shorter, which gives the Signature Motorsport team their first 1-2 in qualifying this year. Let's get some thoughts from the pole sitters. We knew it would be good this morning. I pulled together a, a really, really good lap. I hooked up every single corner. So, yeah, pole position by 0.4 in a short circuit. I'm very, very happy with that. Um, obviously, the racing is what counts. Soft tyres here is, is, is phenomenal. I mean, after lap three, they were switched on and felt like I was driving on glue. So, uh, yeah, it was great. Came across the line, saw the team cheering on the, on the wall. So I thought, OK, well, that was a good lap. We knew coming into this round that the track would probably suit the car a little bit better because it's a go-kart-like circuit, it's tight and twisty and um, looks like it's paying off. Now I'm over the moon, it's two weekends in a row and uh, hopefully we can keep the form going on. Chris second, so Mini 1-2, I'm looking forward to race one and hopefully it stays like this for the rest of the day. Well, the weather here today at Swatkops Raceway is a little chilly but we're expecting a top of 22 degrees and great to see so many fans trackside for our two 17-lap races. Let's head to the commentary box for race one. Here's Richard Crail.
Thank you, Let's Say Ho. Nice to be here as we get towards the halfway point of the Sassol GTC Africa season. This could be a critical round in the championship chase. And here's where we're doing it. Svart Cops Raceway, a track modelled on the famous Brands Hatch Circuit in the UK. It might just be eight turns and 2.4 Ks, but there's plenty of action. To get us a closer look, here's Chris Shorter in the Champion South Africa Mini. Hi guys, welcome on board my Mini John Cooper Works. We had Swat Corps, it's 2.4 Ks, eight corners, so quite a tight little track, but let's go for an onboard lap. Now coming out of the last corner, we're going to go into fourth, tipping it into turn one, about 160 Ks an hour left-hander. Nice and early on the power, using the LS dip, and hard on the brakes for turn two. It's important to brake as late as possible here, big overtaking spot. Also really important to get the drive out of here. As we come out, we're going to go into fourth, and then we're going to turn three, the long right-hander. As we exit here, we're approaching about 180 k's an hour. The GTC cars are doing 200. And it's hard on the brakes. Leave it in fourth gear. And really important to get on the power here up the hill because the next corner is quite a good overtaking spot as well for us. It's all the way up the hill. Hard on the brakes as late as possible. Turn it in nice and early. Make use of the curb on the inside as well as the curb on the outside. And tipping it into the next right-hander. Also really important to get on the power early here as the run down to the last corner is also a good overtaking spot. Through the kink, into fourth, and then hard on the brakes for the last corner. On the power, and into fourth, and that's the lap of Swat Corps in my mini John Cooper works. So we're ready for race one, Sassol GTC Africa here at Svart Cops. This place should provide plenty of action. Remarkable performances throughout qualifying. Lap times this year, two and a half seconds faster than the last time the series visited in 2016. That shows the pace of development in this championship and we've got a really good championship to talk about as well. Gennaro Bonafidi on pole, four tenths of a second in front of Matthew Hodges, Robert Walk, third personal best performances for both of those drivers with Michael Stephen going from the outside of the second row. Brad Liebenberg and Chris Shorter as we saw before a 1-2 in qualifying for the Signature Motorsport Mini Team the first time that's happened in Sassol GTC. So we're ready for a start. We're away at Zvart Cops. An action-packed little circuit and an action-packed turn one as Gennaro Bonafidi sweeps around the outside of Hodges in the Volkswagen. Brilliant qualifying performance from him. The defending champion ranges up on the outside in the number one Audi. And everyone through turns one and two cleanly. Then around the sweeper. It's close, Robbie Walk's under pressure, but the Audi's on the wrong side of the road, Michael Stephen, and Walk will slide in and grab the spot. So the Sassol BMWs, one and three on their home turf, the opening lap. And in GTC2, it's the Minis, first and second. And now there's a challenge from Walk on Hodges around the outside. It puts the BMW off the ideal racing line, though. He'll be attacked by a couple of Audis. Stephen goes through, and Simon Moss will look to do the same. Meanwhile, Bonafidi pulling away out in front. An ideal start for the championship leader. He's got half a dozen car lengths now over Matt Hodges, who's running second. Daniel Rowe, right in the thick of this battle pack, just in front of the two BMWs with Michael Van Royen in front of Johan Ferre. Now Moss up the inside of Walt. Little bit of contact there. The exit of turn two, some fisty cuffs, and it'll be a drag race now. The run up into the next corner. And Moss has got the right racing line this time. He was on the wrong side of the road on the opening lap, but finally gets his way past. So an aggressive opening lap from Simon Moss, who's been Mr. Consistency so far this year, but fights his way to the front. Here's the battle back in GTC2. Keegan Masters, championship leader. Got the job to do today because those two minis have been very, very fast. Feedy out in front. Matt Hodges in second for Volkswagen. Michael Stephen third. The form driver in the championship at the moment. Coming off a brilliant weekend at the East London Grand Prix circuit last time out. Let me go back to Moss, Rowe, Van Royen and Faree who had a shocking qualifying off the road. Then an electrical drama in the EPS BMW. So has to do it from the back of the grid. 
Sean Dumini joining the series for the first time this year in the Ford Focus in GTC2. Great to see different brands and Sean has been a great addition to the GTC2 field this year, as competitive as it is. Here's the margin at the front. Battle for second is on Michael Stephen applying the pressure. Then back to Robert Walt, Simon Moss, then Rowe, Faree and Van Royen. And this is why those positions have changed. MVR a little bit wide and Faree goes through. And this is feisty. This is really feisty. Couple of Volkswagens ganging up on the Ford Focus. Mandela Matakani involved. Look at the contact there, Dumini. Elbowed out wide, big save, big slide. How did they catch that? This is the view from Stevenson. Check this out. So he gets into Dumini. Dumini off the road, comes back onto the racetrack, gives Stevenson a whack. The 69 car holds onto it. What a save. Unfortunately, the Rustenberg Rockets going to pit lane. Michael Van Royen after a really promising performance in qualifying earlier in the weekend. In practice, I should say. He's gone to pit lane, but that car's been fast. Hopefully he can get back on the racetrack, score some points for his Sassol GTC campaign. Home racetrack for the Rustenburg Rocket. And Dumini has been hit from all sides. The Ford Focus looking worse for wear. That was an extraordinary little bit of motor racing there. How they didn't end up pointing in the wrong direction, I don't know. So back to the fight at the front in Sassol GTC. Bonafini pulling away. A couple of really good opening laps. That cold tyre pace that's been a hallmark of his season on the Dunlop Sportmax soft compound tyre has been a hallmark again. Thumbs up from the Volkswagen to another Trevor Bland. Gets overtaken by Keegan Masters into the right-hander. That's the battle for third in GTC2. Bonafini serenely out in front. Had a nice little break between rounds. Jetted off to Italy to check out the MotoGP at Mugello. BMW, the official safety car provider of the MotoGP World Championship. So a nice little break for Gennaro. Under pressure leading the championship. Three straight wins to start the year. Under pressure at East London as Michael Stevens started to strike back. And their three wins apiece coming into the fourth round of the 2017 season. Steven continues his pressure, his attack on Matt Hodges for second. The minis are going at it too. Chris Shorter applying the pressure to Bradley Liebenberg. Turn 21 this week, Chris Shorter. So many happy returns to him. Stevenson finds the Zweitkopf's pit lane. I wonder if that's a side effect from the bump and run we saw a little bit early on in this race. How about this fight? Hodges wide, he'll be in strife here. Down the inside goes the engine extreme Audi, and that will be second place for car number one. So a little bit of mistake for Hodges. He just ran wide on corner exit, dropped a couple of wheels off, and that was all Michael Stephen needed. You don't need to give this guy much of an invitation to take an overtaking opportunity. He did it, he's through, he's second. Let's see if he can go out after Bonafidi, the race leader. So that's the margin. Seven laps in. Gennaro has pulled away. Wonder if Hodges can fight back. It's been a really solid weekend for the Volkswagen team. They've had good pace all throughout practice and qualifying. Really good qualifying performance for Hodges too. He just ceded that position to Stevens now though. Needs to chase him down. A little bit further back to Robbie Walk, who's under pressure from Simon Moss. Right, red, meanwhile, is the order of the day in GTC2 production-based category that has been such a highlight this year as Michael Van Royen rejoins the racetrack. Charles Smallberger on Trevor Bland. Uncharacteristic race so far for TB, who's been a wildfire this year. So exciting at the opening round at Kalani. He's yet to win a race in GTC2 this season, but he has been on the podium so many times. But right now, the Volkswagens have got it all to do because the Minis are one and two. It's been a well-documented story this year. Signature Motorsport built these two cars within a space of a few weeks before the opening round of the championship at Kilani. They had a shocking weekend there, badly damaged one of the cars, but they've rebounded. They had a terrific win at East London, and they have been in great form here at Zvartkops. Off the road, Moss. The black Audi runs wide. 
Rowe wasn't quite close enough to attack there, but boy did he try. You can just see them pushing the limits here. A lot of teams talking after practice about front tyre grip and tyre temperature being an issue. Running the super soft tyre that you run in the races now in Sassol GTC may help that problem on what's not a hot day here at Tvarkops. There's Moss. Super consistent this year. Second in points coming in. He's been second four times throughout the first six races of the Sassol GTC season. Missed a consistency, but one of a couple of drivers you feel not too far away from a race win. Gohan Faree is another that you think there'll be a big result not too far away. Chris Shorter unfortunately had to miss the practice action here on Thursday at Tvart Cops. He was off doing his exams, so he's putting his schooling first, but unfortunately couldn't take to the track. His teammate Brad Lieberberg did all the setup work on that car. They've both been very, very fast though. Bonafidi continues to lead. This is the fight a little bit further back. Moss again with two wheels wide off the exit curve. As they try and pull the margins in, there's the leading battle. And you can see that Michael Stephen has been able to gap Matt Hodges for second place. He's slowly closing in on Bonafidi, who has a big slide working his way through the GTC2 competitors. We've talked about this already this season, getting past the GTC2 cars is one of the jobs you've got to do if you're a race leader in Sassol GTC. Dealing with the traffic is part of the job and sometimes it can make and break your race. You've got to be level-headed, you've got to be cool and controlled because the GTC2 guys are having their own motor race. Bonafidi passed Bland now on the inside into the final turn. Charles Smallberger will be his next target. He's doing a fine job. And a championship leader who would consider this a home round. Nightclub DJ when he's not busy racing the Sassol BMW. DJ's a lot in Pretoria, not too far away from this great little racetrack. VM Innovations based at this racetrack. Looks after the two Sassol BMWs. And those cars have been in great touch, especially the car of Bonafidi. But it was really good to see Robbie Walt qualify third. That's his best qualifying performance of the year as he builds his experience. G's got a great benchmark as a teammate at the Sassol BMW team. Like 13 of 17. Long races here today at Zwart Cops. So brings the mental component of these drivers into the game as well. I reckon Michael Stevens just taking a bit of lap time out of Bonafini while Gennaro's been dealing with lap traffic. Stephen has closed the margin. Matt Hodges still in third place. There's the leading battle in GTC2. Mini, Mini, Volkswagen. And then the Sassol GTC leading BMW who's looking to put these cars a lap behind. He does one to Keegan Masters. Two Minis will be next on the list. All part of the broader BMW family these days. A great story to see the racing return of Mini to South African Motorsport this year. And they're on course for a one, two. Just a few laps to try and bring it home. Michael Stephen dives down the inside. Couldn't quite get past Chris Shorter there. And that's delayed him a little bit. And he's not pleased either. So looking to chase the championship leader, Michael Stephen delayed. He'll lose valuable tents and Bonafidi's margin just ex extends ever so slightly. Now he goes past Liebenberg, who does the right thing and pulls to the inside of the start-finish straight. There's a great crowd watching on and there's some familiar faces as well. That is Kelvin van der Linde, famous South African racing surname. He's been doing a tremendous job on the world stage in season 2017. Putting great results and representing South African motorsport on a global stage as a factory Audi driver. He's been racing in the Block Pan series. He's been racing in Australian GT, but this weekend he's in pit lane here at Zwart Cops and he's down talking to Let's Say Ho. Kelvin, congrats on your win at, uh, at the Nürburgring 24 hours. How are you finding uh, GTC racing this weekend? 
Well, yeah, it's, it's great to be back in South Africa. First time watching the GDC live, and uh, honestly, my first impressions are really good. Uh, good to see such close racing, um, especially with so many manufacturers involved, um, you know, how close it is. It's really cool to see the professionalism and uh, proud to be associated, obviously, with, a, with the Audi brand and seeing them do so well. So your dad is managing the Signature Motorsport team and they're doing quite well this weekend. Yeah, obviously great to see the, the progress. I know how hard they've all been working on the project with the uh, two new minis and I uh, hope they can continue that for race too. He's been racking up the frequent flyer miles, Kelvin van der Linde, but a great export of South African motorsport. Mentioned the Nürburgring where he's had some great success and now back home this weekend to check out the Sassol GTC action. Just a lap and a half to go. The battle closing in here. This is Simon Moss closing in on Robert Walk in the second of the two Sassol BMWs. So this fight's not done yet. And Moss had applied the pressure early, then dropped back. He's closed back in as the race has gone on. Meanwhile, Bonafide about to start his final lap. Michael Stephen behind has not been able to make an enormous impact. And Gennaro looking for win number four. And what about the story for the Signature Motorsport, the factory mini team? The champion and Ferrodo on the side of those two cars. They're looking for a one-two result. Here's Bonafidi. What a performance. He's had to deal with this guy doing all the winning lately. Uncharacteristically quiet at East London last time out. But this has been an emphatic performance for Gennaro Bonafidi. And importantly, he's racking up the bonus points as well. Points for pole. Points for fastest laps. It all goes towards a championship challenge. And the points leader is going to do the business in race one at Tvartkops. It's a win for Gennaro Bonafidi. And what about this result? One, two for Mini. They sweep GTC2 with a championship leader home in third place, Keegan Masters. But what a drive, Bonafidi and Steven one and two. And Volkswagen makes it three different brands in the top three in Sassel GTC with Hodges home in third place. Walt, Moss, Rowe, Faree and Van Royen completed the eight. It's been a while since I won a race. It feels like forever, but it's, uh, yeah, it was really, really good. I'm really, really happy with that win. Uh, we had the pace this morning in qualifying and, and I just put my head down again and, and did a couple of quality laps, lap two and lap three. Managed to pull a gap and then just maintained it. You know, uh, I just went easy on the tyres. We got long races here uh, with a softer compound, Dunlop. So really, really just trying to manage that for for race two. Yeah, quite happy with the result. Uh, you know, last practice session yesterday, we lost boost. Uh, we worked till one o'clock this morning. The mechanics did a great job. Uh, went out this morning, had the same issue. So five minutes before qualifying, it was all frantic, and that sort of compromised the race. Uh, I think now in the race, it's it's better, but it's not quite right. Uh, once I got to second, uh, sort of had the pace to, to catch Chinora a little bit, little bit. But I think if we started close, it could have been interesting, but uh, looking forward to race two. Yeah, I had an awesome start, you know. My plan was to come out of turn two second, and I managed that. And Chinora had a small gap, and I thought I'd, I, I could maintain that and, and try to chase him at the end, but I just didn't quite have the pace. And, and you know, I was struggling with a bit of understeer, and, and Michael managed to get me up into the tabletop. And then I just, you know, settled in behind him and thought, you know, rather finish third and bag the good points and, and bag a podium. And yeah, you know, for the team, they've done a really good job on the car this week and I, I've got to give this to them. Yeah, really good drive for the Volkswagen Ace. But what about this story? Sean van der Linde, the technical director at Signature Motorsports, celebrates with his two drivers. Third win of the season for Brad Liebenberg. First podium of the season for Chris Shorter and a 1-2 for the mini team. Keegan Masters was third. Yeah, I mean, 17 laps is a very, very long time. And um, with Chris and Keegs behind me, it's a bit of a tough one because, you know, managing the brakes, managing the tyres and then trying to, you know, conserve a little bit of time to, like, cool the brakes off and the tyres off. And then I got Chris back on my bumper and, you know, it's it's a bit of a tough one. But, um, yeah, I managed to come out on top at the end. Super tough for the team with our first one, too. I think it's a great achievement. But it was a very tough race. Um, I struggled to keep Keegan behind me. I overheated the tyres and the brakes a bit behind Brad. But at the end, we were able to hold him off. It got a bit hairy when the big GTC cars came past. But luckily, we were able to hold on. And yeah, I'm really chuffed to be on the podium. Well, around after grabbing their first win in GTC2, it's a 1-2 for the Minis. A remarkable performance for them. And what about that drive by Gennaro Bonafidi extending his championship lead? Well, one of the big stories of race one was a lack of performance by Trevor Bland, who's second in the GTC2 class but there's no doubt he's been one of the best additions to the grid this year. 
The start of 2017 saw many new faces in GTC2, with most of the front-running Polo Cup drivers stepping up. But one of them has stood out more than most. Meet Johannesburg native Trevor Bland. From humble beginnings and with only a short list of racing accolades to his name, Bland embodies all that encompasses being a privateer. And most of that is just giving it a red hot go. When you're young, you always buy and you watch Formula One and you watch those guys and you know they all come from karting and that's what you look for. And unfortunately, reality sets in the older you get and you start realising that not all is possible for all of us, but we make the best of what we've got. I didn't achieve much in karting, it was very expensive and from karting I went to Formula V's. I finished second in the Formula V National Championship. So yeah, and then from there I went to Polo Cup and yeah, then this is where I am now. Holding his own on track, Bland has already scored five podium finishes in 2017 and isn't afraid to mix it with the best in class. I think GTC is changing South African motorsport in a, in a, in a huge perspective. The series has got some fantastic drivers, they're probably the best in the country. I raced with Keegan last year, I raced with Bradley last year. So we've come up together and uh, yeah, look, we, we were all pretty competitive last year as well and I didn't expect for it to go this well. There's still a lot of improvement to come but it's just been fantastic and I'm enjoying it. But as the competition heats up towards the halfway mark of the championship, Bland is still determined to reach the top step of the podium and show what the little guys can really do. To be at a privateer and to show that I can still be competitive is great for motorsport. I'm showing that you can come with a small budget, spin your own spanners and you can come racing and you can be competitive. That's what's really enjoyable and I'm going to win in a race this year. I have to win a race this year. I'm sick of being second and third. It's coming. I'm not giving up yet. Gennaro Bonafidi is a man on a mission. As championship runner-up from last year, the 26-year-old Sassol BMW driver was determined to start 2017 on the front foot. Gennaro Bonafidi, he wins race one of the 2017 Sassol GTC Championship. He goes and takes a double victory at Kalani. He is now three from three, Gennaro Bonafidi. And if winning the first three races of the year wasn't warning enough, Bonafidi is hungrier than ever to go one better this year. At the back end of last year, we really won a lot of races. We were fighting back in the championship after a slow start. So I think we, we brought that momentum really nicely into this year. And the first round was amazing in Cape Town, obviously full points haul. The car was fantastic. It just felt good that weekend, you know, everything was in a rhythm. Uh, we moved to Kyle Army, we were on, on, on pace. You know, East London was a bit of an up-down weekend. But look, we're still leading the championship. We got, a, we got a, a lead's not one to write home about, but something that we can definitely push. But it's a lead all the same, and an important one for Bonafidi, whose main focus is to stay in front of long-time rival and reigning champion Michael Stephen. I started racing Michael when I was about 14 in go-karts in, in the senior rock class, and uh, I moved into production cars, class A as well, and then from there the rivalry really started. And, and Look, last year it, was, it heightened again um, in, in, in saloon cars for sure, but uh, we'll see this year for sure. It looks like it's going to be another humdinger. Proving how serious he is about winning, the Johannesburg DJ has recently scaled back his off-track DJing ambitions to take on a new corporate role with BMW South Africa. A move which his father Vito Bonafidi, who is a multiple rally champion in his own right, says will help in preparing his son towards the next phase of his racing career. As, as children grow up, they, they tend to find themselves and, and Gennaro always was very good in any sport he partook, partook in. Uh, however, I think in motorsport it's quite difficult and while he always had the talent, he's got to, got to find the confidence and I think over the last couple of years, uh, he's got more and more confident and now he really believes in his skill and ability. So I think that's made a big difference. Um, he's matured, he's now confident and he knows he can win. So with five more rounds left in 2017, Last year's runner-up title to shake, Bonafidi is ready to rid himself of the bridesmaid title once and for all. Yeah, that's that's a, I go to bed dreaming about it every night is the fact that I've come second in a national championship, I think six times. So in Polo Cup, my first two years, I came second. Uh, production car second again, uh, GTC last year second. So my, my whole life's really been about coming second, but being so close. So for me to grab that first is really, really big for me. And we're pushing really hard this year. I think we've got a good chance this year and, and we need to bring it home.
So race two here at Vartkops and it started with quite a lot of drama. The field gridded up for the traditional reverse grid race and it's always action packed. This one was a little bit too action packed. Robert Walk was turned around on the second lap. The car needed a lengthy recovery and that meant the red flag was brought up. Unfortunately, the Sassol BMW team were unable to get Robert's car fixed and back out for a restart. So the field is gridded up. We're set for a shortened 15 lap race. That means there's some new names at the front. One of them is Johan Ferry. He's on the grid talking to Letseho. Johan, how are you feeling about this race? It's been a bit of a tough weekend for you. Yeah, the sessions, the practice session didn't go too bad, but this morning it all started going haywire. The brake bias seemed to come loose and it adjusted itself, so I had all the brakes to the front. So I locked up in qualifying and in the first seat the same, so we re rectified the problem now for race two, so hopefully we can attack now. And we're in a good position at second on the grid, so let's see what we can do from here. Well, Johan is a guy that's won in every single category he's contested across the years in South African motorsport. He is yet to win in Sassol GTC. Could today be his day? Let's watch the EPS Couriers car going from the front of the field. They're away for their formation lap. These reverse grid races have been nothing sort of extraordinary since their introduction at round two at Kyle Army earlier this year. So the Sassol GTC field underway. GTC2 get reversed as well, which means that the signature minis are at the back of the field. Mandla Matakani and Trevor Bland will be towards the front. So this is going to be very much worth a watch. Ready for the rolling start. Race two at Tvarkops. The lights are out. We're underway. Johan Free, the inside of the racetrack, heading into turn one. Dives down the hill. Moss follows him through. Then it's a Volkswagen and another one around the outside. Roe with a big committed move at turn two. Bonafidi. He's been pretty good in the reverse grid races. The king so far has been Michael Stephen. He's made it his own. So watch for the number one Audi to fight his way through. This is a great battle. Daniel Rowe hanging tough on the outside of Moss. Ultimately has to cede the position to the black Audi. Hodges running in fourth and towards the front of the field in race one earlier today. It's still going on. Stephen down the inside now. Bonafidi looking to follow him through. Van Royen in touch with them after the dramas. In race one had a turbo boost pipe come off that car, which forced him to pit lane. So Faree is going to lead. The race shortened by two laps. 15 laps now the distance. Still a lot of racing in a short action packed lap here at Tvartkops. Bonafini with a great run off the final turn, sends it at turn one. Down the inside of Hodges and gets another spot. These are the drives that make a championship. When you're under pressure, when you're at the back of the field, these are the races where you need to deliver. All about GTC2. Trevor Bland is there. Here's Brad Liebenberg, shorter around the outside. And Bland getting gobbled up by the two minis. Well, I don't think that's a performance issue. Well, it's a performance issue for Trevor Bland. Not of his own doing, though. You feel like that car wasn't going at full noise. Van Royen is. Good pass for him up the inside. Bonafini continues to march his way forward. And it's all going off. This has been a hallmark of these reverse grid races in Sassol GTC this year. Unbelievable action. Rowe now under pressure from Bonafidi. And just to confirm, unfortunately, Robert Wog was unable to take the restart in this race. Too much damage to the right rear corner of his Sassol BMW. So he's watching on from pit lane. Van Royen communicating his intentions. Front bumper to rear on Gennaro Bonafidi, similar BMW. So keen for a big result. Did some testing before this round. Michael Van Rooyen, the Rustenberg Rocket, was really happy with the performance of his car. Unfortunately, didn't go to plan in race one. Been looking for a strong result in this. Moss with a big slide and he's off the road. So that was Moss and the Audi. We saw him doing that in race one. That was a little bit more extreme though. And he'll lose spots because of it. And Bonafidi will be a big beneficiary. 
So Gennaro goes through. Van Rooyen will do the same. They're side by side. Now Enviar's just off the road and Moss goes past again. It is all teeing off. And Hodges now up the inside. How about this action? Meanwhile, serenely out in front, Johan Faree is pulling away. The man from Cape Town, who's been a consistent performer this year, looking for his first win, has been able to build a margin while it all tees off behind. Here's the battle in GTC2. Mandla Matakani, Keegan Masters, one and two. Charles Smallberger third, then the two minis. Fourth and fifth, and they're all locked together, as has been the case for a lot of the GTC2 season. So much potential in this class. Production-based category. Cars with about 200 kilowatts, their front-wheel drive. They've got their manual gearboxes. Huge amount of driver input required. The two Volkswagens up until this weekend have been the dominant power. But now the Minis are working their way forward. A little bit of hip and shoulder from Brad Liebenberg. He gets through on Smallberger. So there's action wherever you look. The big crowd here today at Smart Cops really enjoying this racing. As are we. And it's a one and two for the factory Volkswagens. Man, the Manikani drew a big result. Had a quiet weekend at East London. Difficult opening round of the championship for him too. Got some good points at Kyle Army in that breakthrough weekend for him. So, battle for the lead is on and the battle for the minors. Rowe under pressure now from the championship leader. All Gennaro can see is car number one further up the road, driving away his championship rival. It's going to be a close fight actually now between the two Audi drivers. Simon Moss and Michael Stephen in the battle for second in the point score. Michael Stephen will be looking very good if things go the way they are to jump to second exiting this round. He was third in points coming into the weekend. After that disappointing opening round way back at Kalani, it seems like an age ago now. Van Royen down the inside. Great move. Really good move. Controls the slide with the right foot on corner exit. The Rustenberg Rocket is having a really good race. And it's teammates two by two at the front of the field in GTC2. The Minis attacking in pairs as the Volkswagens look to defend. So the two Golfs lie in a stern. Then the two Mini Cooper JCWs. Smallberger back in fifth place has just lost touch with these two leading groups or two leading teams now in GTC2. Here we go, Van Roy now down the inside of Moss. This is turn one, shows the nose. Wasn't quite close enough to make an overtaking maneuver though. What about turn two? Down the inside, good move. Big slide though, he gets it stopped. He has been making all the moves, Michael Van Rooyen. This is great stuff. It's what we wanted to see from that bright yellow and green car all season long. And that's the view behind him. As we said, action wherever you look. VW and Audi side by side. And now the battle for the lead. He's been hunting him down, Michael Stephen. Johan Faree is officially, I think we can say, under pressure. 38 car on the outside. Great racing. Just great racing. High quality stuff. And it started in qualifying when Bonafidi was on pole by four tenths. The next five cars were covered by two tenths of a second. And the margins were about the same in GTC2 as well. It's fiercely competitive. The Sassol GTC Africa Championship this year. Move for the lead. GTC2, Keegan Masters down the inside of his teammate. Man, Lamatikani is going to be on the wrong side. And the mini, Chris Shorter, will try and capitalise on that. He's going to go the long way around to make it work. So Matakani's had a car alongside him for most of this lap. And he continues to hold this spot. Now Liebenberg looking down the inside. Nice move, car 12. He moves himself to third place, gets in front of his teammate. 
So there's battles for the lead in both classes. Van Royen. This has been his spot to pass this race. A little bit of fisticuffs up there under brakes. The back of Rose Volkswagen. Bonafidi's going down the inside. Rowers on the outside. We're on board with the VW Jetta. Has to surrender the position to the championship leader. And Van Royen wants the both of them. This has been a really good fun drive to watch for the Rustenberg car. Great pace. And Hodges looking to buy his way into this as well. We're riding on the front bumper bar of a mini JCW. We're looking at the back bumper bar of Mandla Madakani up the hill, down the inside. You can see the car sway as he gets the limit of braking into the right-hander. And that's an overtake for Liebenberg. Down the inside, it's second. He's through. And now Faree is having to drive defensively. Placing the car in the middle of the road. Whoa, Rose lost it. Loses the rear of the number 11 Volkswagen and spins. And Moss has to take evasive action. So Simon Moss runs wide out into the gravel. It looked like he just locked the rear brakes going in there. We've seen that a few times this race. Daniel Rowe does the flick spin. Tries to get the number 11 car going again. Moss lost a lot of time now. Here's the battle for the lead. Down the inside, Michael Stephen had to make a little bit of a hole. But the two most experienced drivers in the field, the two champions are going at it. And a change of the lead as car number one hits the front. He has made these reverse grid races his own. Michael Stephen, for he's not done yet though. Had a look down the inside into the final turn, but car number one covered his line and the engine Extreme Audi is in front. Five laps to go. He's made an art form of working his way through the field. Michael Stephen, 12 times a South African champion. Now Van Royen. Whoa, on his own, loses the rear of the Rustenberg rocket and spins. Wow, that corner, it's been the action zone all weekend long, especially in this race. Challenging the grip levels, challenging the limits of adhesion and often exceeding them. And now the front of GTC2, it's Volkswagen, Mini, Volkswagen, Mini, don't adjust your set. It is the same, the battle for the lead is the same as the one for third and fourth place. And Mandla Matakani with a telltale mark has got some damage on the side of his car. Double waved yellows here into turn two. Not allowed to pass there, Chris Shorter. That's why Van Royen spun in the wrong direction. And his car stranded on the apex of that corner. So Chris was denied an overtaking opportunity there, but safety first. You can see the marshals, ever enthusiastic, trying to recover that car. And unfortunately for Michael Van Royen, he's going to have to go to pit lane. But what a starring performance by that guy today. He's been pushing the limits of the Rustenberg steel construction car. And it has been great fun to watch. He's due a big result in GTC. Been unlucky this season. Mechanical dramas have cost him big results. But he put on a show today. He won't get the result but he'll get a lot of adulation, you feel, from the fans watching this race. So back to the front of GTC2. The battle continues now. Mandla Matakani has been under fire all day long. And Chris Shorter looking for the over-under and makes it work. That's a nice move. Just cut across the back of the Volkswagen Polo coming out of the final corner. Got the run. Defended his line going into turn two and Chris Shorter gets himself up to third place. Remember, had that shocking opening run, the mini team at the first round of the championship, looking to bounce back, a one-two result in race one here at Svart Cops, a terrific result, and another podium would be more fantastic points for Signature Motorsport. Van Royen out of pit lane. So hopefully he can circulate and score some more valuable championship points. Leaders are getting into traffic. Here's Daniel Rowe. He's had a bit of a checkered run in this. Had that spin earlier on. Cost him some time. Blocked the rear brakes. And had a lose. But now this is getting worse. Mechanical dramas. 
You can hear a big bang in the driveline of that car and he shut it down. And Daniel's day is done. Oh no, and worse for Van Royen. He spent some time in pit lane and the bonnet has flown up on the Rustenberg rocket. This will not be a pretty replay. Whack. Huge crunch. And he has no option but to pull to driver's left and get out of harm's way. Well, the fighting drive ends in, well, not a great result, if we're honest, for Michael Van Royen. And there's Johan Ferry working his way through lap traffic. It looks like he's going to have to settle for second place. But for the fast developments team that look after this car and that of Michael Van Royen, Freddie Pretorius worked very hard on these cars. It's been pretty fast. I think Faree will take hope out of that, that he will continue to be a contender for the remainder of the season. A race win you feel not far away. And Keegan Masters, what a terrific drive for him in GTC2. As Michael Stephen comes out of the final corner to start his final lap. There's blue flags flying. They were waved for the GTC2 cars to let them know that faster cars are coming up behind them. Them a little bit longer to get to the GTC 2 pack in this race, mainly because of all the furious battling going on in Sassol GTC. So Michael Stevens got about two Ks to go. And what will be more ominous for his rivals is that our next rounds at Port Elizabeth at the Aldo Scribanti circuit, it's home turf for the Engine Extreme team. It's home turf for Volkswagen as well. Yet to win this season in Sassol GTC. I wonder if they can pull a big result at their home track in round five of GTC Africa. But for this guy, this will be the third reverse grid race of the season and the third win for Michael Stephen. It'll move him to second in the championship. The pressure is on Gennaro Bonafidi. Michael Stephen wins again. The defending champion makes the reverse grid races his own in Sassol GTC. And how about these reverse grid races? Entertaining to a fault from lap one to lap 15. Stephen the winner, Johan Ferry home in second place. That is his best result of the season, having been third four times before today. So Stephen, Ferry and Bonafidi, the top three. Hodges, Moss, Van Royen failing to finish. Keegan Masters, Took out the win in GTC2 in front of Brad Liebenberg with Chris Shorter third, Mandler Matakani, Smallberger and Bland next. So what a drive for this guy. He moves to second in the championship now. He's the big mover of the day and owning these reverse grid races. The championship leader, on the other hand, in GTC2 did the business today. A great drive from Keegan Masters. Here's the standings after four rounds. Bonafidi still with a handy margin, but Stephen jumps his teammate, Moss second and third. Johan Ferry for Hodges fifth in front of Daniel Rowe. Unfortunately, that DNF from Robert Walk really cost him points today. Masters now leads Liebenberg in the GTC two points. Brad jumps up to second in front of Trevor Bland and Charles Smallberger. Let's go down and hear from our winners after a great day's racing here at Svarkops. Yeah, it was actually quite funny. While we were busy racing, we came onto the pit straight and I was behind you, and I thought to myself, yeah, this reminds me of the uh, production car days, you know, when we used to, to really battle it out. So it's good that he's back, uh, you know, he's got the pace to run at the front. And I just pushed, uh, you know, but conservatively to save my tyres. And then, you know, about five laps behind you, I could see his rear tyres going, and then I, then I put the hammer down and, uh, you know, pulled off a move up at the top, and from there it was, uh, you know, just take it home to the flag. Driving the wheels of my car, and and the car felt fine, um, no, no big issues in my car, the braking was good, the handling was good and yeah, he just seemed to be a little bit quicker everywhere and unfortunately got past me, I think for four laps to go, five laps to go and then that was it, uh, just pulled away slightly as well and I had to settle for second, we had quite a big gap to, to third and I think Tonado was coming towards the end, but yeah, I'm happy to be second, at least better than third, so hopefully next one we can be first, but yeah, it has to come soon and, and we're coming, we, we're definitely coming, but uh, I needed to come quickly now. <laughs> no, it was very tough. The Mini had pace this weekend and um, you know, all that we could do, the VW team is strategize and uh, uh, plan our moves carefully and um, get the lap times down, the consistent lap times. So uh, the Minis are going to be up there with us fighting 
and yeah, I'm looking forward to the next event. Well, congratulations to all the winners here at Swatkorps Raceway. The action continues as we head back to the Eastern Cape for round five of the Sasol GTC Championship on the 14th and the 15th of July. So come join us at Aldo Scribante Circuit. I'm Letsi Zulu. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now.